jumping on all angles. I expect this one to go to a game three, honestly. Like, with how WWE has been playing recently, surely there's going to be other adaptations and drafters. Yep, there we go. Ash and Brom, frozen bot lane. Okay. As Gala and Hung got some OPs. Hang on a minute. That's dangerous. Kaiser versus the dead. Ash. So we have a bit of setup from Hope. A lot of assassination from Gala. Scout back on the Tristana. Dive is the name of the game from LNG this time. Gala could not be playing much of a different champion. I suppose the W is still poke. It's not quite the same as uh, throwing a bomb from half, half of the screen away or yeah. actually being the bomb yourself and flying in to do damage. Yeah, that's right. He is the bomb. Well said. Uh, all that all in. Going to be fun to watch as LNG playing with a couple of melees here with the Rel with Zika. So Tarzan has someone to emphasize with. As Let's see what WE can do this game because last one... It was a very quiet early game, Nymera, but we saw just LNG slowly eking it away. Uh, WE weren't able to have really any response, but at least this time, you know, there's a bit more pick potential again with the Ash, but we've also got some of that range added in that last game we, uh, I guess, saw in a greater emphasis with the Varus. Mm, Shanks back on the Azir, of course, talks about that being a comfort pick for him. He had an okay game in game one. It wasn't necessarily his fault. He was just against a composition, which, I mean, what do you do as an Azir who has to deal with artillery raining down from the heavens onto you? You don't have the range to deal with that one. The way you beat Azir's range is having even more range. Ah. Don't necessarily have that from LNG this time. He's done. But again, as you said, it's the all-in. We'll see what happens in the 2v2 because, I I'll be honest, these are two picks that a lot of the time has been taken away from teams in multiple regions, right? The Rel has risen up to top tier priority, not only in the LPL, uh, but in other regions too, as almost first pick worthy, as I think the Kaiser can be said the same as Garlop on this Kaiser as well. His 400th game in the LPL. It's crazy to think that this guy has played 400 yeah. games since 2019 spring when he debuted. That's actually insane, because I think... In my eyes, because, you know, when you started watching many seasons ago, we were thinking maybe like the RNG Uzi era being kind of like the olden days of the of the LPL back then, because then after that it was Gala. So Gala, for me, in my mind, is still of a later era than some of our, you know, true veterans of the league. But he is a true veteran now. Mm -hmm. Might have himself a bit of jungle attention towards this bot side. Tarzan, what? Off the vision. Here we go. Flash in, flip. There's the attract and repel as well. Nicely done from Hung. And now Hope's in a lot of trouble. There's Tarzan running in. He gets out with double summoners and ghost pops as well. I wonder now without any, and all it took was Hung dropping two of his own. And the wave is in a pretty bad spot for Team WE as well. The cannon minion currently surviving. I wonder if that means if Gala and Hung can uh, get themselves in a decent slow push or free situation. Hope has to go back to base. He has no choice. Tarzan using this opportunity with Hope back into base to get some vision down in the enemy jungle. Great start, though. As you were mentioning, it's big for LNG's bot side that Tarzan wants to hover around. Is now still in river. Scout doing the same, but Hung is going to be cheeky with it. Rocket jumps out of there just in the nick of time as uh, Tarzan will be able to smite this one away. And the fight for bottom scuttle ends right there. I think it's quite important away. because you normally expect the Ash in the early levels to get pushed over the Kaiser. I said, not always able to walk up to the wave to control it and push it in. Now having the Scuffle Shrine against you means that Tarzan has a couple more options towards bot side to see something there. Shanks getting Ooh, flashed flash. on. Yeah, it's going to be matched here. One more auto, rather two, excuse me. Shanks would have been dead and locked in place, but it's flash of flash, which is always going to benefit the jungle of LNG. Scout has no rocket jump right now. Hang hanging around, seeing if you can find something in that mid lane. Not able to do so. They will get himself a view onto the raptors we'll get the timer on that at least and it looks like you will get the uh the spot the, the spawn kill as well it's gonna say hung may be looking for a devastating angle but scout's still playing towards his jungle and uh shanks just hovered back into his own turret so for tarzan think about what he's just done in four and a half minutes nymera as hung is trying to play with that summoner advantage it's what is it five summoners in four and a half minutes a scout uh-oh Rocket jump, and he's out of there without burning his flash, but still a health trait that Hung will be happy with. That's your typical jungler comes into your lane to help you reset. Don't know whether that means uh, Shanks will save his TP. I'd imagine not. I think he wants to use his TP to get back into the lane. It means that his second teleport of the game will be available on that second, um, on the Unleashed teleport. Quite close to the timing when that comes off of cooldown. So, the uh, early jungle pathing, getting mixed results across the map. 
Not really striking the first hammer blow yet, though. Remember that uh, as Scout tried to hold minion wave there, he can't really freeze Tristana. Not really, but Tristana can't freeze, let's be real. So as the wave gets reset in, this will well, be another TP timing. It's funny you mentioned that. Because mm -hmm. one of the one of the best games I remember from Spring was Scout on Tristana, where at level one you take Q, so you can hit the enemy uh... champion really hard, but you can slow stack the wave. They used that to beat Cassidy when they kind of ego picked it into the Tristana as well. And you were really good at setting down like level three minion wave dive or like wave three minion wave dives on mid lane. Something that LNG were really good at. But of course, as soon as you unlock that E, I mean, same point, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It becomes hard of it. I, li I like it, though. Um, unfortunately, we didn't really see much at level 1 because it didn't matter too much. It was about bot side that the cameraman was focused on, as he should have been. And speaking of which, Tarzan still the same. Guess where he is? On the bot side that has no summoners. He's going to be spotted out by a ward, but Hope and Iwandi have to pay respect in this lane, considering how strong that Sejuani will make him. Uh, an awkward um, kind of decision-making process for the Braum in this lane in some ways, particularly when someone else turns up to the party. Do you stand next to your Ash so you can put up the shield and get the Guardian, but both of you get damaged? Or do you uh, stand further apart and stop the Rel getting huge value? You can't stop her engage. That crash down is going to happen either way. The Q stun will happen either way. The, uh, the stun on the E obviously has been removed nowadays. It's just to speed up and an extra damage, but that Q, even though it's a projectile, I think it does hit everyone through that shield. More of it in action as scouts the focus here for WE. Meanwhile, Hung just crossing a ward. But guys, if I didn't, if you didn't hear me say it in game one, I'll say it again. LNG are a slow team. WE aren't sprinting it either. This is going to be a slow early game unless they expose bot, which will be real. No mirror, those summoners are almost back up. And it's an Ash who at level six, alongside a Brom, there is a lot of disengage. That makes it hard to all in. Oh, it's so annoying playing into that combo if you can't close the, ga the, the gap very effectively. Now, once you get to one, two items, you can potentially blow up the Ash with uh, the Kaiser flying the other side of the shield. And Gala, of course, one of the better Kaisers of all time, thinking about it. You know, back to his original MSI run. Gala was incredible at this champion. True. Have to see if he can bring out a Vintage Performance. Had a Pentacle on the pick in Spring as well. How much can you do with it? He's got some help for a dive here towards bot side. It's Heal is up. Most of the other summoners aren't. I mean, timing here for LNG is huge. Those summoners are almost off cooldown. Hope and Iwandi about 5, 10 seconds. Crash down there. Hope doesn't have it. Iwandi now the next target. Or is it Hung? Well, there's a trade kill. And Hung dies to Hung. I knew it would have to happen again as LNG <laughs> on the escape. That Scout is here over the wall with ult with flash. Everything shoved on in. The ult combo beautiful from WE. They start spitting and Shanks starts autoing. In fact, Gala? one more to get the kill, but they've left Gala to auto attack. Shanks wanted the kill on Tarzan, but is he in trouble now? As Gala tries to get out, he flashes. Shanks with nothing to get over the wall. And it's a three for two in the end. LNG somehow trading up. It's Gala's Kaiser with two kills at the end of it as well. Hope doesn't have himself the level six. He's the hawk shot. Can't do and, anything. Uh, gets... Can't do anything, sadly, for him. Picks up some farm in this minion wave. But uh, Gala, so much gold. And you're right, it was the dive before level six. Importantly so. No Ash ult, no Braum ult with that Glacial Fissure to make things uh, interesting. But this is the problem when you're playing against the Rel. You can't really stop the engage. The stun from the Q added after her rework. It's so easy to point clicks, lock someone down, and then get your guaranteed crash down, which was always a little bit hard with the previous rail. Sometimes you can just flash out of that W. It didn't really work the way you wanted it to. After this point, though, it feels like when you see Shanks flying over the wall, this should be pretty much lights out. This should be done. But Gala manages to get so many people low HP, and then Kaiser Passive has the execute damage. Second cooldown of the W comes up. Two stacks of that, easy as you like. Doesn't manage to last out against Shanks, blows the flash, but doesn't die either, importantly. As we come back to live, Scout's in the bot lane. Shanks has to match this. He just gets a bit of turret plating, almost sets up for the next one as well. Gala sitting mid. And we've just changed lane dynamics completely with Gala and Hung still here. I mean, even before the replay, Nymira, they switched to mid. Yeah. So I guess we're just doing this for a while. I think um, Hope just saw the big minion wave mid, and they changed lane assignments for that period of play. You can see right now, Hope, Iwandi, um, they're heading back towards bot lane. You can't always recall at all time times in the game. You need to wait for a certain break in the waves. And as it stands, I was wondering whether Hope and Iwandi would swap back down towards this bot lane after they'd found that gap. But as it stands, they're recalling. Really interested to see if W go back towards bot lane proper now because Gala and Hung will be there first. 
will indeed with a Kraken actually on both 80 carries of LNG. Uh, getting close here for Hope. Wait and see when that Noon Quiver is backed on. In fact, excuse me, he already backed. So there is a big item advantage here for Gala, as you'd expect. As Hung thinks about chasing up, but it only forces Shanks to leave the lane. As we go back to standard lane assignments for a little bit as well. LNG with 1.5k gold lead. We've got the first dragon, second one up in two minutes. Uh, it does feel like with Herald being in the inventory as well, Nomira, this early game, once again, is just going to slightly edge out LNG like it did in game one. Mm, so, catching back up on those lane assignments. Shanks still in bot lane. Hope and I want still in mid lane, even after they'd seen Gala and everyone else kind of moving around the map in the right ways. Scout still on this mid lane. I, I don't really see what Hope and I want are gaining from this, I suppose. You, you, you think maybe, hey, we might get dove again. Is that going to be an issue? We need to mismatch our bot lanes. Is that the play? Trying to stop Scout getting priority as well. Feels like Team WE. At least not under threat of having their Ash Dove again. I just realized, probably first time, I don't know if it's ever, Kraken first mm -hmm. on Kaisa instead of the Shiv. We have seen so many Shiv AP builds. Uh, even like we've seen a variation on Tristana as well. It is so nice not to see that broken ass item first. Like, <laughs> seeing Kraken first for Gala. I mean, this is this is not poke Kaisa here, Nymera. This is not like, okay, play it safe. This is Gala Kaisa. Dive in with the rest of his team. No holds barred. Just shred down with AD damage. I mean, I like it. No. Now, I, I, I did actually have a think about that earlier. Because like, mm, I wonder what build it's going to be. I think because you have the Gwen who wants to be soul AP, you just go towards AD and you say, all right. I think it is... Majority has been Shiv in the LPL. We've seen a couple of Crack and Slay games. Remember Ruler playing one or two. Um, oh, yeah. But still, it's it's it has some um, potentially earlier spikes in terms of damage. The Shiv build kind of needs two to three items before it really starts popping when you get um, the Nash's Tooth and the Rage Blade in. This is much better to snowball the game before the enemy team can really get online. WE going in for the invade to start off this dragon. Though. That's what we need to focus on because... LNG are nowhere to be seen, and we've got a Herald still for Tarzan. Uh, he needs to put it down sooner rather than later. I'm not sure what the timer is, but Tarzan, I, did he just flash purple? Where's Herald going? Uh, that's a good question. Not sure about that one. Where is he going? That's a good question. Well, Hung going to be arrowed up as he's the follow-up engaged. Tarzan has to get on in. Doesn't care about Herald right now. Instead, they care about giving another kill over. Unfortunately, over to Hung as TP follows suit. LNG are bringing in the big guns. As Scout just jumps into a prompt, Zika now with the needles flying through as Shanks takes full advantage of that. Thank you so much for the turret shot. Hope gets the kill. Now for the follow suit, Scout is going to have to ulti out of that as WE is a 3 versus 3 using range onto Tarzan to flash forward. He flashes out. It is chaos. It is yakety sex. Put down the bloody Herald, I'd say, as Tarzan still waits it out just in case WE are nearby. That is such an overforce from LNG. They double teleport towards that player, I think. Wait. They're, oh, they're, oh my now God. they're forcing Never again, mind. this one's going to yep, work. Hope, hope is dead. But guess what? Shanks is nearby. Dragon's there as well. Scout's going to get the push in bot side. And Tarzan, the Herald, is in base. It's going to go down towards that mid lane. Hope dying at the end of that play is such a... That, that, that is such a uh, freebie for LNG. They should have walked away from that play feeling very awkward about things. Cube got huge value out of that top side. Three plates. And uh, Zika gets nothing in that bot side dive. Dies. Doesn't get access to any of those plates or anything. So that Gwen, who normally wants a lead, is one of the better matchups into the Cassante as well. Uh, being put down a little bit. But at least uh, the Ash dying towards the end of that play means that LNG aren't losing completely on both sides of the map. At least they're able to get Scout, I believe, or at least um, we, we got a bit of gold transitioned over to WE. So gold is even, but this dragon fight, maybe it's not. Gala's still big as he gets Shank's crown of the Shadow Queen down. Hope with the arrow flies on in. Gala in the pit. He's stuck as TP's there, but Hope is running into a Tristana again. Scout flashes out after getting the kill. As the now Rocket jumps over the wall, Dragon's gone as well. But Zika thinking about the angle. Has needlework, but nothing to get over the wall. Scout is just getting away with literal murder. Absolutely is. Hope's giving the openings, but Scout is the one taking them. He found the opening around the Baron in game one. Gala had 50% of the damage, but Scout had some very important moments in that game too. Make no mistake, LNG 
It's not been an easy early game from them again. They've tried to accelerate the tempo a little bit. And as we said, Summer has not been the split of fast LNG early games. This has somewhat been uh, rectified, though, by the fact that Scout has managed to pick up the pieces. Scout has just been given a window into the mid game as pretty much as big as Gal is going to be as he gets Tarot bot side. Meanwhile, this is the play from WE. Zeke are going to launch out with the needlework. I'm not sure what they expected here, but no one else pulled the trigger. Three members top side, and nothing really gained apart from the opportunity of their first turret. But they're not even going to get that. Not going to get the first turret. Not going to deny the Gwen any farm. You could argue, okay, in the last play that happened around bot lane out of turret, you could say, well, you've got some individual advantage. Took a lot of that HP down on that tower we just saw in that, in that top lane outer. Um, but they don't manage to keep Zika even further down. Hope, he's just away from his team. Again, dies in that bot lane towards the end of the last play in a very awkward moment. That felt like it kind of threw the play back over towards LNG. And once again, yep. just out of position. 3-1-1. One, and one. Scout, absolutely massive. Gala as well, don't forget about him. As we come back to live, WE getting the second Herald, but what is it really going to mean? Mid turret, not pushable at this point. Not even going to knock over from the Herald. Uh, top side they got by themselves with Shanks. At least getting an objective away from LNG at this point in the game. But meanwhile, well, Herald's going down. This is happening. Scout, probably not going to be able to get it. But Nymira, I mean, this is just the power of Tristana left alone in the sideline. And now you can't afford to leave this bot lane unattended. Otherwise, you're giving 600 gold over to someone like Scout's Tristana, which will be a lot of gold to uh, throw into a carry that's already got a lot, of, a lot of gold in pocket. On the other side, Shanks at least gets that top lane out of turret, finishes that one off, but you know it's not going to be a particularly easy game for Shanks. It feels like he's going to have to survive out on the dives. I don't think LNG are going to sit in his soldiers to allow him to DPS for particularly extended amounts of time, so as much as I like Shanks as a player, I think he's been very successful for WE. He's had a lot of great moments for them. I don't think once again, like in game one, he's got a very easy job ahead of him. No, and look, in game one, I mean, it took a while for them to come online, but by then LNG just found the perfect team fight. And it feels like for WE, again, it's it's like game one. Being slowly edged out, side lanes taking over yet again, team fighting looking good. Even though gold's not that far ahead for LNG, even though the game's definitely not won, it just has that same vibe to it. Two dragons now stacked up as well. Third coming online in two minutes' time. And no, Mira, we just got to track the items here because Gala will have himself too. Hung now has himself the Evan Shroud as well. I mean, we are set up for 80 carries to be, well, set up by likes of this Rel, by Hung, by by Tarzan, double Evan Shroud in the team. Definitely helps burst down the first target. I think that makes a lot of sense when you're playing around resets on Tristana. Gala flying in to assassinate someone as well. And they have the damage to do that. The gold is not crazy in favor of LNG right now. It's only the one to 2,000 gold leads of WE. They're not completely behind in that regard. But again, you have to look at where the gold is. Yes, maybe Zik is not the most fed Gwen ever. Those 280 carries are very much hitting their items at a very good uh, time, though. Yeah, look again. We're going to talk about the second item coming through shortly. Gold on the side of WE on this Wukong. Maybe partially on Shanks on Hope, but not enough at this point. 50 seconds till Dragon, guys. I know you've been sitting around. You've been in bed, you know, twinkling your little toesies. That's natural. That's what's going to happen here in this series if it goes to a three as well. Expect it. We've had a bit of blood in the early game, more so than game number one. But around this Dragon, no mirror, what do you reckon? You reckon people got to get out of bed for this one, or are we just going to handshake deal? WE have done a really good job of keeping vision control down. So LNG, they found really good angles for Scout in the last few fights. And he has that second item. If he finds that angle, he's going to really tap W and U on. I just don't think they have the best options to answer right now. They haven't pushed bot lane. They haven't pushed med lane. They have no vision towards this bot side. As it stands, I think WE can stand on top of these Azir soldiers and Hawk shots and play this fight out pretty well. As you mentioned, though, those ultis will be up and available. Hope with the arrow. Shanks with his own. Cube thinking about the engage. Scout just looking to poke out. Hung's angle huge though. This Wukong, if he flies in now, LNG without Zika, he's walking in, spotted out on the ward. But hang on a minute. Oh, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> Actually spotted out uh, before he can do any damage, but the dragon's already started and WE have full control of the river. 
So LNG say we don't have River Control, but we do have a Tristana and a, and a Kaiser. We can take down a lot of damage on this in, in a turret. So with that going down, unfortunately the topside wave is not set up, but I mean, LNG can threaten Baron. Uh, Nymera Shanks is backing away to TP in. They can draw out that teleport. LNG have a very quick Baron. Arrow's going to fly through, but if they get the TP, that would be worth an important moment there again, because Baron, if it goes down against a team like uh, this LG team, they have a Tristana for the Siege. Again, they have great ability to kill Taurus, but WE, good ash ult. Means that Gullet, uh, Gullet Scout can't finish that one off. Taking this mid lane out of turret is very important to Team WE. They've lost their mid lane in a turret. When you go, when it goes to these Dragon fights, these Baron fights. As uh, Needlework flies through, as I want to be tanking it up for the longest time. Needlework doesn't really do that much to hope at this point. With two items, regardless, Zika on the split pushing builders. Yeah. LNG unable to defend, W able to open up the map, but again, it's the same threat for Baron Nightmare. Like, they're in the spot to uh, make sure WE have a delayed back and double AD carry. Baron will go down the quickest. That mid lane turret needed to go down for WE because the Baron setup is so much harder when you don't take that down. LNG, they're trying to keep the mid lane push, keep but going to the end they, of the jungle. Are they inting over red? Zika just used Nita work. Tarzan in a weird spot, jumps on in though. It's the Magnet Storm from Hung that may have done it all, as LNG now in a good spot, but hang on! Shanks flashes in, but Gala gets him! Gets the better of him, look at the 80 carries! Look at the LNG 80 carries! Gala, 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 Gala! Freaking Gala again! You're not escaping Iwandi with a triple kill on the back end! It's Q who picks up a good couple of shutdowns, but he's the only sole survivor! With Gala standing 5 0 and 3. This is not a fight which is won one sidedly enough for the Baron to go down afterwards, though. Smite was back up and available for Team WE because Wukong comes back out of base. So LNG, they walk away with important gold. Gala is getting insanely fed yet again on his iconic champion. But LNG don't walk away with that Baron, which they were fighting so heavily for. Again, this whole back and forth in mid lane, it's about setup for that Baron. Having towers up in your advantage really helps you go towards Baron. And uh, LNG, I felt like they'd overstayed a little bit because they just lost mid lane out of turret. They thought, okay, well, we've got to, we've got to keep fighting in the enemy jungle because Baron's still up. We need this. And then the Wukong ult comes through. Luckily, Rel ult has more value in this one. So Hang yeah. gets a really good value out of that. Like, buy space for Gala and Scout. Wow. If that lands, maybe we have a different conversation, but Shanks on his ear, waited a long time for his big yep. play, can't make it work. Love it, Scout. Look how aggressive he is on this trip start. I mean, the bad is nuts. It cost him in the end, but still, it's the position from Scout that is such a threat to WE as well. Triple over to Gala, as we said. Scout with a lot of DPS too, but almost three items now off the back of that play. This Kaiser is everything, and Nymera, it's just like last game. It's a 3k gold lead. It's now on to Baron. LNG trying to draw in WE. Not fully committing. Just waiting for WE to get lured in. Can see second item picked up for Hope. Infinity Edge picked up for that Ash. We don't really see this item that much anymore. Ever since it transformed over to being a Mythic. The other utility items tend to be much more valuable. But with Ash's passive, Infinity Edge does give a fair amount of value to that one. Maybe with that two item spike, Hope can... Play behind the Braum Shield, get a bit more damage done, get some of those key shots onto the uh, Navori Quick Blade 80 carries on the side oh, of LNG. Yeah. Now walking into a war, WE getting deep vision because his Baron is completely blind. LNG have to walk into Fog of War. Tarzan first, Hung next, Gala behind, Scout there too. Look at the range as Arrow follows through. Great Braum ulti from my Wandi Hung jumps on in and Tarzan's just dead. Scout, okay, no more praise for that man. A double over to Shanks, LNG in a 3 vs 5. Gala still has ult, what can he do with it? Still in Fog of War, LNG, they need to stay in the area. They can't allow Baron to go down. Well, Hung needs a beautiful ulti here as Hung is the dangerous one. You're gonna get confused as Zika runs on in with the to work. Shoves back the Magnet Storm, great Gala. Now pacing out. I wonder gonna follow through from Shanks, no way. Do they win a three versus five? And Q's in, Gala rolls in. Oh my God, his Kaisa absolutely unmatched. It may be Jackie Love skin. But with the kite away, whoa, Cube says no. Jumps on in on the Cassante. You can match skill with 200 years. He's made of pixels and all of those pixels form up into one beautiful cube. 
That Kasanse, we've kind of been paying attention to him on the back end of the fights, cleaning up here and there, but that Kasanse performance does a really huge amount of heavy lifting for the side of Team WWE. Once again, though, the fight is not one-sided enough to get the damn Baron down. WWE, they are really strong when they get control of the river. We saw that around some of the dragon fights which LNG chose not to go towards. This happens again up towards this top side. Rel doesn't manage to get over the wall, so Hung is kind of out of the fight. This Rel doesn't get a huge hex flash over. It means that the front line just gets obliterated alongside one of their 80 carries. At this point, you'd say, okay, Team WWE probably should be running away with a fight, but Gala is so ungodly fed. Even with the Braum shield up, it doesn't come in in time. One of the carries goes down, rearranging over to the other side of the map with the uh, oh. fight with the ultimate. Gala so clean on this 80 carry. The, the target prioritization, insane. Of course, Cube in the end. Nailing down the rest of the fight. Uh, give credit to Cube, of course. Great buffering. Ultimately, though, Nymera, as Dragon was taken, Baron is what we come back live to, and we do it all again. Let's fight it! A fight! Oh. Back and storm! Hung is in! Change the name, he says to the Wukong, as Cube is doing it again. Oh no! Gala runs in with his dying breath, gets a trade kill, but Tarzan flushes into Shanks. But Cube is unhinged, man! Four dimensions from this top laner. And all of them are looking mighty fine right now. Gala's ult hits the Cyclone. He gets knocked out of his killer instinct. He gets put down into the dirt. Luckily cleans up hope towards the end of that play. But this saga around Baron ends up with LNG taking the objective, but now they can't use it. They're getting pushed in across the map. It's only Scout up and alive after this point. Maybe he can jump forward onto it. Onto Hung. It's not going to be the case though. Teleport back under this turret. WE trying to get back wow. out on the map quickly before LNG can use the Baron buff. Uh, I mean, timing at least from Scout to get some damage down will stop any further of that push. Somehow LNG still have a gold lead after all said and done, but you have to be real. I mean, W are the one winning these fights. No one can get through Cassante. There's no mirror. Baron, but the cost of it with WE getting a good engage. Really need to see what happens with Gala here because he's sat up here trying to kill down the front line. Watch what happens with the Wukong. It's spinning, it's spinning, and then as soon as he jumps in, just clips the side of it. Can't get out onto the back line. If he times that a second or two later, or just gets a better angle, he kills both the back line right there. Doesn't manage to do so, takes the damage, takes the CC, goes down. Close run stuff. God damn, you're right. Good pick up there. Missed it in the fight. Just saw Gala trying to clean the backside, but then saw Cube doing the same. Six, zero, and three. Three and a half items. Cube is massive. And even though in that fight, Zika was shredding with that ulti and so much AoE damage was coming through, after the beautiful kinematic engage from Hung, as you can see there with the damage shots, look who does the most. That's a tank! That's Nymera, that is a tank! <laughs> That's a tank! He has no damage <laughs> items! What we, we fitness! Need to break... <laughs> we need to bring back the copy pasta for Orn. Remember the Orn thing where he's like the, the tank, mage, paladin, assassin, warden, fighter? It's like... We have revisited that again with Cassante. I mean, bring out... I mean, Showmaker's got his own copy pasta for this one. Really feels like it oh, uh, yeah. rings across the ages, though. Top laners which do it all. They somehow keep coming out. I mean, what is the... I got, I got. I'll find the copy pasta. I've written this down somewhere. <laughs> oh, Cassante, 4,700 HP. 329 armor. 201 MR. Unstoppable. A shield. Goes over walls. Has airborne. Cooldown is only up. I mean, one no, second, on, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, one second. That's right. A different game. It costs one uh, 15 mana. May as well cost 15, <laughs> bro. I don't know. I just, honestly, being a caster in 2023, what is the world? What is the world coming to? <laughs> I wish I had an answer for that. I mean, Kasanse is a champion, which um, I'm trying to remember if you said this in an interview. It was one of the LPL top laners post-game, um, but... Cassante's laning phase has gotten nerfed over time. That's been where he's gotten hit. It's, it's harder for him to get the solo kills like he was getting so often in lane, and he still occasionally gets them, but it's harder to do. His team fights haven't really been touched, though. Even though his ultimate um, shreds more resistances now than it used to, you lose, what, 85% of the resists you built up, and then that gets transformed into damage by the same... You don't get more damage for that, it's just a straight nerf. He's still killing the AD carry. He's still doing enough damage that the Omni Vamp he gets from being in that form makes him basically unkillable in melee range. Maybe he can be killed in a side lane. I doubt it, though. Even with the three items from Scout. A cube is, is so ungodly strong. I apologize. Maybe I should apologize now to stop the, the firing process. Whether it's a fight <laughs> or being fired, I mean... 
I don't know. Should I be in fear? Should I be <laughs> saluted? Should I be praised? Should I be reprimanded? Ah, oh, just leave it up to the gods of League. Is um, I'm so glad next patch we lo we lose this champ, don't we? Is 1313 Nymera? Is that what happened? Uh, um, you know, it, it feels like one of these champions, much like when Vladimir was buffed in Season 5 and then remained after infinite nerfs after that point. We've had it with Zeri recently, we had it with Zoe and Yumi. I'm just not willing to say a champion is dead until I see it on the pro patch, because sometimes okay. the players are so good at the champions <laughs> after that point that it just doesn't matter. I'm afraid, I am yep. petrified that he's going to be around yet again. I yeah. love watching the best players play it, but the champion is so damn strong. I mean, Cube, right? I, I, uh, guys, I'm complaining about Cassante, but Cube is still put on a clinic. Like, there is still a part of this game that Cube is still nailing. As LNG forced the TP from WE because they're around this dragon. It's going to be dragon number three. We begin with another 5v5 in a 32 kill game. As that was a blind Arctic Salt Hung. Gets into the back line, though. That's only on the Hung. But the jungler's burnt down. Seeker running in. Need to work. Number one doesn't get egg, but it's an AoE. The Kinematic Huge Scout knocks him away so that he gets his own kills. Gala flies in. Flashes over. Quadra kill. Gala is legendary. You know it's Penta time for one of the best ADs in the damn business. Gala does it again on his champion, and he does it his way. He locks in the Kaiser, and he makes it oh so worth it. LNG, they're a slow early game team, but they absolutely take off with rocket boosters when Gala's ready to play. This man is one of the best ADs in the business. Long gone are the days talking about Uzi, the new generation, the new AD no longer. Gala is a god. And LNG are damn lucky to have him in this 2-0. Funnily enough, in spring, I also was present for the Kaiser Penta kill he had at that point too, versus his old team nonetheless as well, or rather his old mid laner in Xiaohu. That was a, a heck of a split from him in regards to his own individual carry.